Welcome to another episode of Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony, and with this channel, I try to bring you guys a variety of different tech-related content. So, if this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. In today's video, we're going to take a look around Unify Protect's user interface. Okay guys, so I'm signed into my Unify Protect NVR, and if you missed the video I did about setting this up, I'll put a link to it up above, as well as down in the video description below. So what I want to do today is just take you on a quick tour around the user interface to see what we have available to work with. So let's get started. Up in the upper right hand corner here, you have the name of your NVR, and then you have your little user icon, and if you click on it, it just gives you the option to log out. Underneath that, you can add additional devices. You can look at the cameras, by the way, which right now we are in camera view. You can look at the cameras in two views as a list, as you see here, as well as in the thumbnail view. So you can toggle back and forth between the two. For now, since I only have one camera, I'm just going to leave it in list view. Coming all the way over to the upper left side of the screen, you have a filter so that you can pick the cameras that you want to see. Now, and again, if I only have one camera running, I'm only going to see the one camera. But if you have multiple cameras on your system, then you can filter by camera. All right. Looking at the camera itself, some statistics on the camera, general overview, the name, the status that it's online, the model. You have the IP address that was issued by your DHCP server, the MAC address, the uh, last time it detected motion, and we'll talk about that in a second. The link state, you can see it's uh, 100 megabits per second. Then we have a link to the live feed, which you can see here, it's loading the live feed, and we'll get to that in a second. And then we have a link to the time lapse. Now, before we go any further, let's just click on the camera itself, and you see that it opens up a sidebar here. And there are several sub tabs. Initially, you have a view of what the camera is currently seeing. If we click on that, it'll open up the live view again, but we're not going to do that at this moment. We're just going to go over some of the items in these sub tabs. So in the about tab, it's just giving you general information about the camera, such as the name, its status, uh, the firmware version. Now, speaking of the firmware version, it took me a while to figure this out. So hopefully I could save you guys uh, some time and frustrations. As far as updating the camera's firmware, unlike Unify Video, where you were able to update the camera's firmware. Uh, in Unify Protect, the camera's firmware is bound to the version of uh, Unify Protect software that you're running. So as you update Unify Protect, it will take care of updating the camera's firmware. So hopefully that tip will save you some time and frustration. That being said, let's just keep going on and looking. It shows you the frame rates per second and the bit rate, which by default are 15 and 3000 kilobits per second. Then it just gives you the host, the MAC address, again, the link state, the uptime, the connected time, and the last time it detected motion. Okay, moving on to the next sub tab, the general sub tab. Here you can uh, change the name if you wish. You can enable an IR accessory if you happen to have one for your camera. You can enable or disable the status light. And then you have some other overlay information here that you can enable or disable. So, for example, by default, the only one that's on is the Unify logo or the Ubiquiti logo. So I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to turn on the timestamp and the camera name. And then I'm just going to come down to the bottom here and say apply changes. This way, when I look at my recorded footage, I could see the timestamp. I could also see the name of the camera that I'm looking at. I don't need to see Ubiquiti's logo in my, report, in my recorded footage. The last thing on this tab is the adjustment of the video quality. If you want, you can play with the frames per second and the bit rate. For now, I'm just going to leave all that set to the default. Okay, up to the next sub tab, recording. When to record. So now, in this version of Unify Protect, and I'm not sure what version previously it was introduced, but you have the ability to record on motion only. And I know that's a big one for some of you. I've been reading the forums and I've just started playing with Unify Protect. But from what I understand, the earlier versions of Unify Protect did not have the ability to record motion events only. 
you were only able to record always 24 7 or never well now you do have the um, option of recording the motion events which i know is making a lot of you guys happy for me i just started playing with this software and other vendors uh nvr softwares that i've you know been familiar with or i've used in the field i've always had the motion events so it's good to see that ubiquity has added that i'm just surprised that they didn't have that from the get-go but in any event it's here now so that's a good thing under motion events you can play with various settings like the minimum seconds of motion to trigger the event the number of seconds before to record and the number of seconds after to record i'm just going to leave these set right now to the default up to the next sub tab zones there's two different types of zones you have motion zones and you have privacy zones so with the motion zone you're able to define a specific area that you want the camera to trigger to record and then with privacy zones it allows you to block out an area of the camera that you don't want to record so for example a neighbor's house you know so to keep your neighbor's privacy intact you can block if your camera is pointing out and you could see your neighbor's house in the you know the viewfinder then you can actually block that out with a privacy zone so i'll show you both right now let's go into add a motion zone and what you're looking at right now is i just have the camera pointing out of a window from my office and right now it's going to record in this entire area if it sees a car coming down over here it'll trigger a motion event so what i'm going to do now is just going to raise this up to here maybe to just the sidewalk like that and like that down to the street you get the idea so now anytime there's motion in this purple area it will trigger the camera to record but if someone's walking on my grass here it will not if someone's walking across the street on the grass here it will not so we can go ahead and we can say save you also i just noticed that you have the ability to adjust the sensitivity as well but i'm going to leave that set to 50 at the default so let's go ahead and save okay so now we have our motion zone saved let's close that let's come over into the privacy zones and i'll show you what i was talking about earlier so let's add a privacy zone and you get the same window again and we're going to add a new zone but this time i'm going to block out all my neighbors houses because i don't really want them in the footage and you'll see what it does in a second so that's one zone let's add a second zone so i can block out these houses over here This way I don't have any angry neighbors. Okay, and once I say save, you'll see what happens. You see how it blacks it out there. So now if we quickly just go over to the live view, you can see how it blocked out that area there. And lastly, under the last sub tab, we have the manage. You have the ability to restart the camera right from within the controller to unmanage it, to tell the controller to forget the camera. Then you can enable RTSP feeds at different qualities. And then if you want to, you can permanently disable the microphone here. That being said, let's go to the live feed for a second. And I'm just going to disable the sound right there so we don't get any feedback. What we can do here is we have a couple of things. We can change the quality, which by default, it automatically sets to 720, but we can actually bring it up to 1080p. And then again, like I said here, you can enable or disable the sound. You can take a snapshot. You can make it full screen, as you can see there. And you see the timestamp, the date stamp, and the name of the camera up in the corner here on the left side. Let's bring it back down. And then we have a settings tab. So if you lift up the settings, you can see a whole 
variety of things you can do to adjust the camera, the microphone, the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, etc., etc., etc. So you have a whole bunch of settings um, and tweaks that you can make to the camera itself. So we'll just say done and we'll close that. Let's take a look over to the left side of the screen. Under the Ubiquiti logo, we have our camera view, which we are currently in. We have a live view, an events view, a time-lapse view, a user's view, and then all the way down here at the bottom, you have your account settings, and then you also have your controller settings. So we'll go through each of these again briefly. So currently on the camera view, let's switch to the live view. And you can see I just have a live view set up for four cameras, although I only have the one camera. If I want, if I had multiple cameras and wanted to add a camera to this view, I would just click on edit view. The list of cameras are on the side here. You just basically take one and drag it in. And then you have your, once you save it, you have your population of cameras in that view. Now there are a couple of different types of views. If we click on add view, you can see you can have a single camera, four cameras, which I currently have six cameras, seven cameras, a couple of different combinations, all the way up to 26 cameras. Okay, but we're not going to do anything with adding another view. We're just going to leave it set to the four camera view right now. Well, that being said, let's move on to the next tab, the events tab. And here you can see a list of all the events that the camera is picking up, all the motion events as it's looking out my window. It tells you that which camera it is. It gives you the time and date stamp, and it tells you the length of the clip as well. So when you click on an event, it brings the event up, and you can view the event there. It gives you the option to download the event if you need it. It gives you the option to look at the event in full screen. If you let me just click on another event here that didn't have the privacy zones, and you can see the difference there. So that's your event view. Now the only thing, again, this again, this took me a few seconds to figure out of poking around the software. You can go to time lapse view from here, you can download the events from here. But I was looking to delete an event. So let's just say I wanted to delete this event right here. I can't do it from this screen. At least I haven't figured out a way how to do this. But if you go into the time lapse view, you can come down here to the trash can and you know click the trash can to physically delete that event. So again, that took me a little while to figure that out. I wish they would just have a a little trash can icon or a delete button on the events page, but they don't. So just tip, you just got to click into time lapse for that particular event and go down and delete it. Speaking of time lapse, let's go in. And if you had the, the camera set to record always 24 seven, then you would be able to scrub through days and days of video here and then select parts of the video that you either want to download or delete. Since I'm only recording events, it's just showing the events in my timeline right now. But this is your timeline view. And let's click over here onto users. And you can see the users on the system. And like I said the other day in the last video, the local user is an administrator. And it just shows you information about the last login, etc. Let's come on down to the lower left hand corner of the interface and click on the account information. And then basically it allows you to, I guess, change your username, change your password, or actually have this user permanently leave the controller. Okay, going down to the gear icon, let's look at the settings. You have general settings, storage and capacity, location, backups, and advanced. So under general, here's where you name the controller, your time zone. Uh, if you want to change any of that, you can do that here. You can check for updates. Currently, we're running version 1.12.5. Under storage and capacity, you can configure time-based purge, which basically says here, time-based purging deletes footage from your hard drive 
once you've reached a maximum time limit. This can be required by law in certain areas. So I know that that could be important in certain situations, so you have that option here. If I recall reading in the forums, earlier versions of Unify Protect um, did not have this feature. I thought I read a couple of threads where users were requesting it, but I may be wrong, so you know, don't quote me on that. Uh, you have your location. It says cloud access must be enabled in order to use this feature. Then you have your backup information and daily backups are turned on, et cetera. It gives you the last backup and the different kinds of actions that you have here. You can import a backup file, create a backup of the current system, view all the backups. And then under advanced, um, you can reveal your device password or edit it. And then under actions, you can enable cloud actions and you can do a factory reset of Unify Protect. And trust me, I did that once or twice as I was getting familiar with the system. It brings everything back to the default like it has never been set up. So there you have it, guys. If you liked this video, found it helpful, and would like to see more videos like this, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. You can help out the channel by remembering to subscribe, give the video a like if you haven't already, and share the video. And Remember to use those Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.